Can AI make you a better brand strategist? Well, let's find out together. I'm gonna to be using ChatGPT to put together a brand strategy where I act as a client and ChatGPT act as a brand strategist. I'm gonna put a brand strategy from start to finish, from brand mission, vision, persona, competitor analysis, messaging, tone of voice, and more. And we'll see if it turns out good or if it ends up being one giant flop. Now, you probably know by now that artificial intelligence, AI, has fantastic abilities to help us brainstorm, write, create, and generally optimize our workflow. But as someone who focuses a lot on brand strategy in my process to create strong, impactful designs for my clients, I was a little bit skeptical about letting AI just take over, especially because I've been building and improving my process for years now to build my own approach to brand strategy. So is AI up to the task? Is it up for my high expectations? Is it going to convert years of work into just a couple of minutes? Let's find out. Now, first, let me tell you a little bit about my own strategy process. Once we kick off a project, my client and I will jump on a strategy workshop call where we'll have a conversation about their brand, their business, and I'll ask them some questions. Well, actually, I will ask them a lot, a lot of questions. Uh, we'll do some interactive exercises together. We'll talk about their target audience. We'll talk about their goals, their mission, all those things. And then I'll take all of that information and put together a brand strategy document for them to review. It's a very in-depth and lengthy process, but one that provides lots of clarity to both myself as a designer and of course the client as a business owner. So in this experiment, what I'm worrying about is whether ChatGPT will really go as in-depth as I do with my clients. Will it be able to pick up on specific things, specific values, specific goals that I mentioned in my conversation with ChatGPT and then transform that into a strategy or not? We're gonna find out together. Now, if it's your first time hearing about ChatGPT or maybe you haven't really had a chance to really play with it, ChatGPT is an AI tool. It's an artificial intelligence tool that is language based. So it can't really produce any images. You can talk to it, you can send it questions or prompts, and it will reply back to you with information, answers, etc. Now, the cool thing is that you can kind of train ChatGPT to act in a certain way, reply in a certain way, communicate in a certain way, and I'm gonna show you all of that. Now, this is also going to be an experiment for me because I actually don't know how this is going to turn out. It's really going to be an experiment for both of us. So stick around, let's jump into ChatGPT and see whether or not it's going to be able to perform a good job as a brand strategist. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm gonna freestyle this with you. So I'm not really sure how this conversation is going to go. I'm not really sure of the results that we're gonna get. We're really gonna discover this all together now. The very first step, the first thing I wanna do is, as I mentioned, ChatGPT can be taught, it can be trained to act in a certain way, to reply in a certain way. So we need to give ChatGPT some context, like what is happening here? If we just say, you know, write as a prompt, hey, create a brand strategy for me, it's gonna give us super general random information because it doesn't have enough context to actually build a brand strategy on. What would be your, your first question to me to start building my brand strategy? So this is where we need it like to give it an action, right? Because otherwise I think if it doesn't know what the next step is going to be, it doesn't know in which direction it needs to go, I think it might get a little messy. So let's see what it comes up with. Great to hear that you're planning to rebrand and expand your business, Bark Studios, to help you with your brand strategy. My first question to you would be, can you tell me more about your target audience? Who are, they or, uh, who are your ideal customers? What do they care about? What kind of pet owners are they? Okay, so this is 
Great. Let's do that. Uh, my target audience, usually when I actually do this exercise with my own clients, before you even talk to them about their tar target audience, I love to learn a little bit more about the origin story of the business why they created the business, what was their motivation, their inspiration. Maybe they have a story about the, the brand name. Uh, what are their goals? I love to hear kind of like the pre-story before we talk about today. But listen, I'm going to go with the flow and let it direct me. Okay, so here we are. I basically said that, you know, our target audience is very, very concerned, loving, caring pet owners. And one thing that they worry about is leaving their pet alone and they worry about leaving them at the daycare because they don't know how they're treated and, you know, whether it's a safe environment for their dog, if their dog is relaxed there, they have fun. So let's send this to ChatGPT and see what it replies to us with. Next, we should consider how we can differentiate Bark Studios from your competitors in the market. What sets your business apart from other pet centers and dog daycares in London? What unique value do you offer to your customers that they cannot find elsewhere? Okay, great. So at this point, I kind of recapped my answers, added some additional bits and pieces and more like structured it in a proper um, paragraph, which I actually can then use when I build my own brand strategy doc for the client. And it gives me what the, it tells me what the next step is, is to define, is to do a competitive analysis, basically look at my competitors. So instead of me doing the work, I know that ChatGPT has some, you know, it it's collected information up to, I think, September 2021, which is a little outdated. So if I ask it about anything that happened between then and now, it probably won't be able to give me information. But I'm going to still ask it to actually do a competitive analysis for me and see what it comes up with. I don't know if the information it's going to provide me with is going to be reliable or not we're not going to go and check every single uh every single business but i wonder if it can put together the information in the same way as i do my competitive analysis with my clients the way that i do it is i usually break down you know when i research different competitors i like to look at what that business does well what they don't do well and how my client can actually differentiate differentiate themselves and stand out and I also wanted to put into a table. Now, as I said, ChatGPT is a language-based program, so it cannot create images or like graphs or anything, but you can ask it to put together, to put information into a table. Okay, so we have a couple of options here, urban mutts, dog house, purple bone barking mad. I would like to assume that these are real businesses, but I'm not going to go and do the research now. It shows us strength, it shows weaknesses, and then how I can differentiate myself. Okay. From the analysis, we can see that Bark Studios can differentiate itself by offering a professional facility with a focus on providing a safe and fun outdoor play area for dogs. All right. While also providing a comprehensive range of services, including daycare, grooming, and retail. Well, that I already told ChatGPT that in my introduction. Additionally, we can emphasize our commitment to transparency and open communication with customers, providing them with updates and photos of their pets during their time at Bark Studios. Now, that's a really cool thought. That's something new and innovative that ChatGPT thought of. So I like that. Now, basically what it did here is highlight my differentiators, right? So things that I could do differently from my competitors. But I wanted to I wanted to summarize it a little bit better and maybe provide some additional information. Put my differentiators into a table uh, so that I can have a, like a clear view of them. But also I wanted to actually give me some like action steps. Like what do I need to do to actually implement those, like to amplify those differentiators? Differentiators. It's a very vague description. <laughs> I think it makes sense to me. I'm not sure if ChatGPT is going to understand. 
I know it will understand to put it into a table, but okay, professional facility. Yeah, invest in high quality equipment and decor, higher skilled and experienced staff, okay. Safe and fun outdoor play area, comprehensive range of services. Transparency and open communication. All right, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave it, leave it at that. It gave me some ideas. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, the purpose of ChatGPT is not to do really the work for you, although now we're kind of seeing if it can do the work for you, but really to take inspiration from it or to brainstorm new ideas, maybe new things that you didn't think of, and then apply it, convert it into your own brand strategy, strategy doc. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, it gave us some interesting ideas, but I want to move forward. So as you can see, it doesn't really give me like my next action step. It doesn't really give me what's the next thing we're going to do. So I'm going to ask it. Okay, let's continue building my brand strategy. Come on, let's get to work. Uh, it, it's mentioned earlier. Where was that? Ooh. Okay, so he, this is where it says, now we should consider how we can differentiate, okay? To build a strong brand strategy, we need to focus on building trust and credibility with your target audience. Okay, great, that's a good suggestion, but how do we do that? So let's continue building my brand strategy. Now I want to see how I can build credibility and a strong emotional connection with my target audience by highlighting the benef benefits of my actually no I'm not I'm not gonna help it out I'm just gonna let it do its thing so let's continue building my brand strategy now I want to see how I can build credibility and a strong emotional connection with my target audience or actually not now I want to see how how can I build credibility and a strong emotional connection? All right, here we go. Building credibility and a strong emotional connection with your target audience are essential for creating a successful brand strategy. Very generic information. Okay, that's a good start, but I would like to dive a little bit deeper. I want to see how we can connect that to the benefits of my services. So I gave it a very vague <laughs> prompt again. I'm not sure what it's gonna do with that. But the cool thing about ChatGPT is that you can really play around and just sometimes ask very vague, but sometimes very precise questions and see what information it gives you. So in this case, I asked it, how can the benefits of my services help achieve that? Uh, I couldn't really, like I knew what I wanted, but I couldn't really communicate that in a very clear prompt. So I'm interested in what it's gonna tell me. Communicating the benefits of your services can be a powerful way to connect with your target audience, achieve your goal of becoming the most well-known pet center and dog daycare in London. Very interesting, it remembered my goal. Here are some ways to highlight the benefits of your services, convenience, quality of care, socialization and exercise, that's interesting, health and wellness, personalized attention. And I think now we could use that information to try and create a mission statement. Now, one disadvantage I'm seeing currently is that it's kind of like all over the place, you know? We don't really have a clear structure to follow. And like when I do my own work with my clients and I guide them through the brand strategy. In this case, we're kind of <laughs> doing things all over the place. But I want, based on these benefits, I want you to create three examples of mission statements. At Bark Studios, our mission is to provide the highest quality care and attention to pets in London. We believe in the benefits of socialization, exercise, and individualized attention and strive to create a safe and fun environment for pets to thrive. Okay, but a little bit 
general. Our mission at Bark Studios is to help pet owners provide the, pet, provide the best possible care for their furry family friends. I like that. This is already has a bit of a personality here. We offer convenient all-in-one services, high quality products, and a focus on pet health and wellness to ensure that pets receive the best care possible. It sounds more as like a vet office rather than a, you know, I know I said pet center uh, where we offer different types of services, but this feels very like a little bit clinical almost. At Bark Studios, we're passionate about pets and committed to their well-being. Our mission is to provide a personalized and holistic approach to pet care with a focus on socialization, exercise, and health. We believe that every pet deserves the best and strive to exceed our customers' expectation in every way. I mean, not bad, not bad. We can definitely, again, take that and then add our own insights, our own findings to craft the best possible mission statement out there. One thing I want to do, uh, I want to say use example number three. I wonder if it's going to understand that particular prompt. Unlike other daycares, we offer individualized attention to each pet with personalized training programs and grooming packages tailored to meet their unique needs. Oh, I do like that actually. We have some new information here. Personalized training programs, grooming packages, again, like new ideas that it's giving us. The next step, what I wanted to do is to create a tagline for me. Tailored care, healthy pets, and happy owners. Welcome to Bark Studios. Not bad, not bad actually, but I want more. So give me five more examples. Let's see. Where pets play, thrive, and wag their tails with joy, Bark Studios. Personalized care, tail wagging happiness, Bark Studios. Healthy pets, happy owners. Bark Studios cares for your fam furry family friends. Tailored care for your furry friends. Bark Studios. <laughs> it's very repetitive. Uh, unleash the happiness. Bark Studios, where every pet is special. Good ideas. I'm gonna I'm gonna praise it a little bit. Great ideas. But what's next? What's the next step in my brand strategy? You're supposed to guide me. The next step is to create a brand identity. Okay, but I'm not quite ready for that. You may also want to consider developing a brand voice. Yes, let's start with that. So to explore the messaging, I would need to know more about your target audience and what messages would resonate with them. Specifically, I would want to understand their pain points, challenges, and aspirations as it relates to pet care, as well as the key benefits and differentiators of your services that can help to address their needs. But we already did that work. You should know that. In addition, I would need to know about your brand voice and tone. Well, actually... I want to know about my brand voice and tone. Uh, for example, are you looking to build awareness, generate leads, or drive sales? Ah, interesting. Communication objectives. Okay, so I don't know if this is the type of information it's looking for, but based on that information, how would you define my... Let's start with brand personality, although I kind of mentioned it before already. Based on the information you provided, your brand personality appears to be playful, caring, and empathetic. What are the top five adjectives that define my brand? Playful, caring, trans trustworthy, empathetic, and joyful. Great. Now, how does that translate into my tone of voice. Playful, caring, show empathy, trustworthy, use a tone that is transparent and honest, use a tone that is warm and empathetic, use a tone that is upbeat and enthusiastic. All right, but a little bit, a little bit general. So what I'm not gonna ask you to do is to give me some do's and don'ts of my tone of voice. And this is something that I do with my own clients too. What are some do's and don'ts, don'ts of my tone of voice? Put the information into a table. That's pretty good. 
Uh, but I am very picky. So actually, <laughs> I want to have some specific examples. This is great. This is actually something I personally struggle with to give like actual examples of like those like little prompts. This can take me a long time. So I love how quickly it gives me that information. Okay, what's next? So actually we didn't create a an ideal client avatar, which I kind of gave it a little bit of information about my target client, but we don't have like a proper ideal client avatar. So, hey, we forgot to create a, an ideal client avatar. Let's do that. <laughs> Pam, 3545, female, London, professional corporate, married with children, dog, golden retriever. Personality, goals, challenges. Ah, oh, this is great. Values, media consumption habits. I like that. Uh, what I'm missing is, okay, so let's see what objections could Pam have about... Uh, leaving her dog with us. What objections or worries could Pam have about leaving her dog with us? So this is a really interesting problem because this can really help then ensure that in your communication, you're definitely covering all of these concerns uh, and, or maybe, you know, you realize that there is a gap in your services. So this is really... This is really cool. Uh, what will help Pam gain trust in our services? Let's see. Social proof, trial period, transparent. These are really great ideas. I like that. Okay, we're getting to the juicy stuff. I want to push its boundaries a little bit and see if I can connect. So one thing ChatGPT does is like look for patterns. So I want to see if I can connect my ideal client's worries and kind of pain points with this, our services and our benefits. So based on that, I want you, I'm not sure how to phrase that. I want you to connect my ideal client's worries, pain points with my services and benefits. Put that into a table. Great stuff. This is really cool. Yeah, this is great. Um, wonder if it can analyze like any gaps in my offerings. Are there any missed opportunities in my offers? Oops and services. What else can I do to stand stand out and solve my clients' needs? Mm -hmm. Virtual services, great suggestion, community events, eco-friendliness, that's a great differentiator too. Well, at this point with everything, we uh, discussed, put all of this information into a SWOT analysis, just to kind of like put it all together so it's not all over the place. But as you can see, ChatGPT has no problem putting together the information into a SWOT analysis. It's really great at actually incorporating frameworks and putting information into a framework. So the last thing, this video is getting quite long, but it's been a really interesting uh, exercise. The last thing I wanted to do is to brainstorm a creative direction. Now let's brainstorm a creative direction. What are your recommendations for my color color palette? Bright, cheerful colors like yellow, orange, and light blue, soft pastels. Okay, this is a little all over the place. Uh, give me a color palette with five colors um, and specific, specific hex codes. 
playful orange, fresh green, calming blue, bright yellow, vibrant pink. Let's actually go into Figma and see what this color palette actually looks like. Okay, so these are the colors that ChatGPT uh, gave us for the color palette. I mean, it's definitely funky. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do much with it. So I'm gonna get, ask it to give me a second color palette as an option. All right, so this is the second color palette that it gave me. I think the color palette itself, like the colors work well. I'm not sure if it's the best choice for our particular uh, brand because of how playful we want to be, how you know quirky and fun we want to be. But generally these colors work better. I think that there is something that we could do, you know, to improve this color palette because there's just a lot of very flashy colors. Uh, but it's, I think it's still fun to see what ideas chat GPT gives you. And then, you know, you can improve on it if you're really stuck creatively. Now we could of course go even deeper and see if it can give us some font recommendations, what other creative assets we could use in our, uh, in our brand, but I'm not gonna do that. This video is getting long. And as I said, it's not really great at you know, like visual representations. What I will do though, is ask it to wrap it up and put this all into a brand strategy document for me. Now, ChatGPT can't really create documents, but I know it will probably create, like break it down into different paragraphs. So it gives us an introduction, gives us a short paragraph on the target audience, brand personality, playful, joyful, caring, brand promise, very nice, competitive analysis, and it even gives us the table. Uh, is it the same? Actually, I think it's <laughs> different competitors, differentiators, messaging, creative direction, gave us some different colors from what, uh, what we had before, SWOT analysis. It's a little, uh, there isn't really like a clear structure, but still some really, really good information. So let me see if we're missing something. And it should add, oh, it's, it rewrites the entire, the entire thing. It just rewrites the entire document, giving us additional information, but that's okay. So this is super Fun. Now, every time I use ChatGPT, I'm just amazed by this technology because I use it extensively in my life, not only for business, but also for various personal requests as well. And it just amazes me how fast it is, how quickly it learns, how quickly it analyzes information and just shares answers with you. And this technology is developing so quickly that I don't think we can even imagine what the next step is going to be. Now, what's the verdict? Can AI replace a human brand strategist with experience, one who spends hours talking to their client and putting together in-depth brand strategies? Well, I would say no, it cannot replace a human brand strategist, but it doesn't mean that I wasn't amazed with the information that it was providing and how quickly it was providing it. Now, of course, in this case, I played the role of a client, but I can see how it can help me translate the answers from my client into prompts, into putting together a mission statement, into finding the gaps, etc. I'm not saying that I will use ChatGPT to put together the entire brand strategy because there were a lot of things that were missing. And I had to do a lot of guidance to actually ensure that it guides me as a brand strategy strategist and I could just play the role of a client. In this scenario, it was a little bit wonky and I really had to prompt it again and again and ask, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? But it learns very quickly and I really loved some of the ideas that it gave me, especially when it comes to growth opportunities, how I can translate
encapsulate my values, how I can connect the pain points that my target audience is experiencing with the uh, points of differentiation of my business. All of this is really juicy stuff that I can then translate into my own voice and add some additional juice, some additional insights that I found personally after talking with my client and then put it all together into a brand strategy guide. So I hope you found this video valuable. I hope it gives you a little nudge to play around with ChatGPT if you haven't yet. See what you can create with it. And of course, remember, don't just copy paste the information that it gives you. Add your own insights, add your own knowledge, add your own value, your tone of voice, etc. And then you will get some really amazing information that you can share with your client. Now, I wasn't really impressed with the creative direction, I'll say. But again, ChatGPT is a language-based tool, which means that it struggles with creative direction, just imagining images and such. There are other tools, other amazing AI tools out there that can help you with that, but I think we'll cover that in another video. Once again, I hope you found this video valuable. Now, if you already use ChatGPT, I would love to hear in the comments, how did you use it and what findings did you get? What interesting cool new things did you try in terms of prompts and what information did you get back? And if you haven't tried ChatGPT before, maybe this video will motivate you to give it a try. It's a really cool tool. There are so many possibilities. I think we're just really like scratching the surface with this video. So give it a try. It's a free tool and anybody can use it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.